Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Priscilla and today we are going to be talking about the BMAT but section two. I already made a video all about section one and the resources that I would recommend. So if you haven't already, I will leave a link for you to go and watch it up here so you can pick up some tips on how to prepare for the exam. Um, but if you've already watched that video, then without further ado, let's jump straight into how to prepare for section two of the BMAT. So what can you expect from this section? Section two is all about your scientific knowledge to about GCSE level. You get tested on your biology, chemistry, maths, and yep, physics. You thought when you finished your GCSEs, that was it. You didn't have to look at Newton's law anymore or ionizing radiation and all those topics. And then you find out that in the BMAT, you have to learn it all again for a 30 minute segment of an exam. Except if you're doing physics at A level, then you probably have to continue looking at all those topics. But most of us will probably do biology, chemistry, or maybe maths to A level. So hopefully all that knowledge is not lost. In terms of timing for this section, you have 30 minutes to complete 27 questions. So that's about one minute per question. And that might seem like a lot of time, but it's not. This section is one of the most time pressured sections. I feel like this section is the nicest to prepare for because you already have all these resources available to you and you basically already know a bit of the content. But when it comes to doing the exam, it can be quite tricky in terms of applying your knowledge, getting used to the time constraints. And that's why exam technique is super important in this section. Before you start revising for this section, before you start doing past papers or buying books, there is one thing you need to do before you start any of that. And that is to go on the BMAT website and download the BMAT content specification. Okay, it's just like your normal exam board specification, but it's really useful because it tells you exactly what you need to know for section two. It lists all the points that you need to cover in your revision. So this is your first starting point. And as you revise, you can tick things off so that you know that you are covering everything. Some topics are going to be less time consuming to go through than others. So things like cell biology and enzymes, those are pretty sweet topics that you can fly through in a matter of minutes or just a couple of hours. And other topics are going to be more time consuming because you haven't done them in a while and they take more practice. So bear that in mind when you start revising because you want to leave enough time for you to be able to practice these calculations until you are confident with them. It's a good idea to write down all the formulas that you need to know, practice each and every one of them and make sure you're able to apply them to any question that requires it. After taking a look at the specification and getting a feel for what you need to know for the exam, the next step is to start revising. And you can start off with using the assumed knowledge guide on the BMAT website. So that's like a big online textbook on the BMAT website that meets all the specifications and has the content that you need to learn. To access the assumed knowledge guide, you need to go on their website and go on to section two preparation. So this area has resources to revise for section two of the BMAT. Click access the guide and click on the subject you want to study. And then below each specification point, there's a little book that when you click on will take you to the main area where you can find all the content. So this BMAT guide is really good because it is straight to the point. It tells you exactly what you need to know. So there's no waffling or background knowledge and that's gonna save you time. A lot of textbooks tend to go into a lot of detail, but if you stick to the guide, then you get the information that you need to know. But obviously, if there's something that you don't properly understand or something that you do need a bit of background knowledge on, then you can use your old GCSE textbooks. You don't have to go out and buy new GCSE textbooks. You can probably just have a look at your school library or even at your local library to find a couple of books available to you. So yeah, don't be scared to dig out your old GCSE textbooks if you need them, but the guide should be one of your first steps. I treated the BMAT like a proper exam. It's not like the UCAT where I just kept postponing and postponing and postponing that exam because I just was not looking forward to it. No, this one, everyone sits the exam on the exact same day. And I treated it like a proper exam, so I started making notes on the content that I'd forgotten, but I didn't have enough time to go through everything in great detail. I didn't have enough time to make new notes for everything. So I looked through my old GCSE notes for a couple of different topics. And even though I had made those notes a year ago, surprisingly things came back, like the information came back to me. So that's one thing I would recommend. Like if you've got old good notes available to you, then just use them. You don't have to make new notes for every single thing. Like you're trying to save time here. You're trying to save time because you're having to reteach yourself the content again 
then it can be quite difficult to do that on your own and so I would recommend watching YouTube videos for things that you don't understand or things that you don't quite remember. You can also ask your teacher for help if there's a topic that you don't fully understand and you want them to clarify something for you. I did this more for section 3 than I did for section 2. I would always go to the English teacher at my school and just ask her for help to read my essays and this lady did not know me because I didn't do English at the school that I did sixth form at and so I would always turn up and ask her to read my essays and she'll be like I don't know who you are but I'll read your essay for you um, but it had to be done so if you need to do that then do it 100% ask your teacher for help if you need it of course practice all the questions on the BMAT website under time conditions you don't have to have revised all the content before you start doing past papers like you can just start doing the past papers but what I would recommend is that you do maybe one or two under non-timed conditions see how much you know get a feel for how long it's taking you to answer a couple of questions how long it's taking you to do a couple of the calculations and then after you've done them under non-timed conditions you can do the next set of papers under time conditions and just try to pick up those techniques that you will need and put yourself under that pressure that you will experience in the real exam Exam. The key to this section is how you master your time as you go through the questions. So a really useful tip is to have a question marker. So say by 15 minutes I should be on this question and always aim for that question so that you know that you're good for time. Remember that each multiple choice question is one mark. So if a question requires two, three, four steps to get to the answer, that's only one mark. If the question only needs one quick recall step, that's also one mark. And these marks are scattered across the paper. So I definitely feel like with the time that you're given, you definitely want to pick up all the easy marks. If you come across a hard question, attempt it first. And within the first 20 seconds or so, you realize that this question is going to take a while to complete. And so you need to make the decision whether to continue working at that question or maybe move on and do all the easy questions and then come back to that question if you have enough time at the end. I mentioned a couple of resources that you can use in my previous video um, but one I didn't mention is BMAT Ninja so that is an online question bank that you can use. I feel like these online resources are going to be really useful this year because the exam is online so it can help you to simulate what the real exam might feel like. So that's it guys that's all the tips I have to give you for section two. Just practice, do lots of practice and you will be fine. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like this video, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Maybe share it with a friend who's also taking the BMAT because we all want to succeed out here. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you are updated whenever I upload. You're not going to want to miss the next upload. It's going to be about section three and how I aced section three of the BMAT. Okay, so make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on that video and I will catch you guys in my next video.